Hello and welcome to this Foster Care Institute online training webinar, Stealing, Why Children Steal and How to Best Address It. I am your host, the director of the Foster Care Institute, Dr. John DeGarmo. I am a consultant to legal and law firms across the nation, a trainer for foster care and child welfare programs across the nation and globe, an author, and a foster and adoptive parent. Our goal during this webinar is to increase your awareness of why children in foster care might steal and how to help stop this behavior. Our key objectives are to increase your awareness of why a child in foster care might steal and the reasons behind this type of behavior, and to give you an understanding of how to develop and implement strategies designed to best provide support and help to foster parents as they try to prevent a child from stealing. It's a cute picture, a child tempted by fresh baked cookies. Perhaps you were that child so many years ago. In truth, that's normal. I was that child, <laughs> and so today's today, when my own wife makes cookies, I revert to that childhood again and snatch a cookie when she's not looking. But in all truth, many foster parents struggle with children placed in their home and the issue of stealing. So why does a child feel compelled to steal? Why does a child feel it is okay to steal? In truth, there are many reasons why. Let's examine those reasons. To be sure, each child has a different reason and a different motive when he or she steals or takes something that does not belong to him. Stealing is quite common in young children. As their reasoning, their reasoning, the developmental reasoning, does not really begin for a child until she reaches that age of five to seven. So when you see a child younger than five or seven taking something that does not belong to them, that is quite normal. For you see, that toddler, that infant, just doesn't know any better. For that infant or toddler who sees a shiny object, a tasty treat, something that she wants, what will she do? Well, she simply will take it. For you see, she has poor impulse control. The part of the developmental stage has not developed yet. She does not understand the reasoning of behind stealing, the consequences involved in stealing, the choice that she's making when she's taking something that does not belong to her. She just has poor impulse control. She sees something she likes, she takes it. Quite normal. Yeah, for children in foster care, when they turn five, six, seven years of age, and they understand that stealing is not right, that stealing is wrong, for some children, stealing is part of a survival instinct. They might steal food. They might steal clothing, shoes, school materials, etc. Why? For survival. Perhaps you can relate to this story. A child was placed in my home. A 13-year-old child, teenager, very, very bright, very intelligent. He was the oldest of five siblings, no father in the picture, 
mother heavily on drugs. The 13-year-old had a bright future ahead of him academically and could go to any college he wished. Yet he was in trouble in school and in trouble with the local law because he was stealing money. He was stealing food. Why was he doing this? Why was he doing this when he was so academically bright and had a pick of any college he wanted to go to? Well, let's go back to where he came from. The oldest of five siblings, no parental figure of any responsibility around. He was the parental figure. He was in charge of his family. It was his responsibility as the oldest to look after his younger siblings, his younger brothers and sisters. So he stole. He stole so he could have food for his brothers and sisters to eat. He stole money so he could purchase clothing and shoes for his brothers and sisters. For him, it was simply a matter of survival. And for so many children who have been abused, who have been neglected, who have been abandoned, stealing is an instinct of survival. Again, perhaps you have seen this in your own home with children that you have cared for. Now, some children may steal simply to get your attention. So many children in foster care have been neglected, have had no a caregiver, adult, parental figure in their life give them any sort of positive attention or attention in general. And they crave, they crave the attention of an adult. And when you're in your home, they crave your attention. Even if the attention from you is negative, even if it's a punishment of some kind, a scolding, whatever it may be, they may steal so they could get your attention. They may steal so you could look at them, talk to them, yell at them, if you will, whatever it may be. They just want your attention. And they feel the only way to do so is by stealing. Peer pressure is an ugly thing. Peer pressure is very, very real as well. Now, some children may steal to look cool, so to speak, to fit in, to impress their peers, to be one of a crowd. So they steal because the peer, the peer pressure may apply in this situation is they just want to look cool. Now, we both know that children in foster care face a great deal of trauma face a great deal of anxieties, face a great deal of stress. Well, stress can play an important factor in the lives of children, and this type of stress may lead to lying, which we have seen in another online training webinar at the Foster Care Institute. It may lead to steal, cheating, and it can even lead to stealing. For youth in foster care, the anxieties and the stress they feel and they face in everyday situations from their situation they came from may indeed result in stealing. Sadly, far too many children in foster care and too many children in our society have poor role models in their life their older siblings, their relatives, and even their parents may steal, may cheat someone out of money. Think about the child who watches his father go to a grocery store and when no one is looking, put something in his pocket. Think of the child who goes to the gas station with his mother and she tries to cheat the gas attendant out of some money. Children mimic what they see. Children mimic what they are taught. And many times the greatest role model for children are their adults in their lives. And for children who are placed in foster care, so many times these role models, these parental role models are negative influences, are negative role models, and children are simply doing what they have seen the adults in their lives do. And that time, Many times, that is stealing. 
There may be some children who steal an attempt to fight back or to get back at someone who has picked on them in some way, bullied them in class or after school or in life, or hurt them in some way. They feel that if they steal from that person who has hurt them in some way, they're getting back at them. They're getting their revenge. Then, then, then of course, there is the thrill of it all. For some, there may be the thrill of the risk of stealing. Some might find this risky behavior enjoyable. They steal because they enjoy the risk. They enjoy the thrill or the rush, so to speak, they get when stealing. Some children may steal as they're too embarrassed to ask for money to purchase items or too embarrassed to purchase the items or the money themselves. This might include sometimes bras or condoms or alcohol or cigarettes, etc. They are simply too embarrassed to purchase the money or to ask for the money themselves. Many youth in foster care have suffered some sort of abuse and may turn to stealing as a release from the pain that they have suffered their short lives. Let's go back to peer pressure, shall we? Peer pressure, as we noticed earlier, is a strong force. Some may steal as attempt to fit into a group, a group that they want to belong to. For some children, stealing might be a means of getting the money, obtaining the money they need to support their drug habit, their drug use. Yes, children become addicted to drugs. It happens in every community. Perhaps you've had children in your own home who have had a drug habit of some kind, an illegal drug, a cigarette, a alcohol, an alcohol abuse. And they are addicted. So they steal money from you or from others to support their habit. James Dean was a rebel without a cause, right? Well, some children may be a rebel with a cause. The rebellion factor is one reason why youth might steal. They're rebelling from authority. They're rebelling from the parents, the adults, the teachers, the caseworkers, from you or other figures in authority. And that may lead them, this rebellion from authority may lead them to steal. Then there are those children who simply believe they will not get caught when stealing. So they take the risk. They believe they will be saved from any consequence whatsoever. And they lie through their teeth to you. They lie to your, through their teeth when they're confronted by you. They believe they just won't get caught. So they steal. And then when confronted, they don't tell the truth. As a foster parent, as a parent, as a caregiver, is this type of behavior disappointing? Is this type of behavior frustrating to you? I'm sure it is. I'm sure you're disappointed when a child in your home that you've cared for, that you have taken care of, perhaps you've raised, when they caught stealing, you are disappointed and you are frustrated. So what do you do? For the child who already has issues of trust and attachment, those children in foster care who have issues of who can they trust and have challenges and difficulties forming healthy attachments with anybody, how do you address a child who steals? How you address them can be very, very difficult and tricky. Well, let's look at first what not to do. Harsh punishments are not, are not something you want to do right away. This will only alienate or may push the child 
even further away from you. Lectures, debates, speeches by you. Sure, you have a lot to say about this. And you know that your words have great wisdom, and you're trying to impart that wisdom upon that child, trying to save them from doing something additional, getting an additional uh, trouble. Those words of yours, of course, are full of wisdom. Yet for the lectures and debates, save them for something else. This is not a time of lecture. This is not a time of debate. Now consider this. Consider this. Many children in foster care have never had any type of moral upbringing or have a different value system than you do. Keep this in mind when a child steals. And this is what you do. You remain calm yelling and shouting at a child who has who has stolen who has stolen from you is not going to help it is not going to help you see this child may have always been yelled at before moving to your home and joining your family so remain calm it may be challenging for you perhaps you need to leave the room perhaps you need to count to 10 or to 20. Perhaps you need to have a time out. But for that child who has been yelled at all their life, they need you to remain calm and discuss the problem calmly. Take time to think about why the child stole. When a child is stealing from you, take a moment to think about what is behind this action. Are they trying to protect themselves? Are they stealing because they're trying to survive? Is it something habitual? Do they always steal? Are they afraid of trying to tell you the truth? Are they trying to impress you? Do they want your attention? Remain calm. Take time to think about the reason behind the challenging situation here. The reason behind their actions. The reason behind stealing. Now, after taking time to examine why the child may have stolen something, remind him, remind the child that you care for him, that you love him, and that you are here for him. He needs to hear these words. Remember, if he's a child in foster care, there's a great likelihood that he may never have heard those words before. He may never have heard any type of encouragement, any type of praise, any type of comfort, care. He may never have heard these words before. Son, I love you. It's going to be okay. Additionally, a child in foster care needs constant encouragement from you. Every child needs to hear an encouraging word at least once a day. Tragically, you and I both know that many children have never heard any words of encouragement at any point in their life. They need words of encouragement from you. Consistently praise him in all areas of his life. Let him know that you that you you know how hard it might be to tell you the truth or to make good choices at times. Under tell him you understand. Many children today do not understand consequences. If they do A, B is the result. There are consequences in every single aspect in life. You know this. I know this. Most adults know this. Yet so many children are not being taught this today, this reality today. 
many children in foster care are not being taught this today because it goes back to those role models, those poor role models in their life. So they need you to talk about choices and consequences. Create consequences with a child when he steals and talk about those consequences. Talk about the choice that he made when he lied to you, when he stole from you. Remind the child that there are consequences to every single action that he does. Good consequences, bad consequences. Remind him that you still like him, you still love him, yet you will not tolerate stealing. Stealing is not acceptable in your household. Stealing is not acceptable in school. Stealing is not acceptable in the family. Stealing is not acceptable in any part in life. He needs to hear those words from you. He needs you to create the consequences with him. Sit down and, and work with consequences. Talk to him about, okay, if you steal, this is going to be the consequence. I still love you, still appreciate you, still like you, still care for you, but you made this choice, and this is a consequence. Not only are you teaching him about stealing and the consequences, you're teaching him about life. You are showing him that there are consequences for all actions that we make in life. Now, we talked about remaining calm. This is true. Yet he also needs to see your disapproval. See, your disapproval upon him stealing is very important. Remember, he may come from a home where he watched his own mother, his own father, his own older siblings, member of his, of his family. He may have watched them steal. He may have been encouraged to steal by some he knows in his family for survival. Your disapproval is important. Let him know right away that stealing this type of action is not okay, it is not acceptable, it is not tolerable, and can lead to great trouble. So try words like this. Sweetheart, I'm really disappointed in your actions. Sweetheart, I wish you had not stolen that. Sweetheart, I feel sad that you stole from somebody. If you saw the online training webinar about online safety, then you know that many children today do not understand the legal ramifications of things like sexting or cyberbullying. Well, the same goes with stealing. He may not understand the legal ramifications, the legal consequences, if you will, of his choice to steal. He needs you to explain the legal ramifications, how he can get in trouble, quite simply, how he could go to jail, how he might never be able to get admitted to college, how he might get kicked off the football team, how he may not be able to go to the military. Talk to him about the legal consequences, the realities, if you will, of stealing, and do so in an age-appropriate and compassionate language. If she is six, seven, eight years, not nine years of age, very, very young, do so in language as appropriate to her age level or her maturity. Same applies for if he's a teenager, age-appropriate, and mature language. Consistency is important. Be consistent with your punishments and with the consequences he should face when he lies and when he steals. Use natural consequences when he should lie and when he should steal from you or from somebody else. But be consistent. Let him know that if he lies or if he steals from you or from anybody else, that this is going to be the punishment. And it's going to be the punishment every single time. 
be consistent. Do not let off. Do not lighten up. He does not need you to be his friend. He needs you to be his parental figure that will guide him, instruct him, help him, and protect him. Give her a chance to replace the item that she stole in some way. Whether with returning the item that she stole, or if she cannot do that, then in cash value. Help her create some type of work plan so that she can earn money to replace that item. Years ago, we had a child living with us. Went to a dollar store. And he stole something very, very minor. I don't recall what it was. I just recall that it was not under, it was under $2. He came home. We found that he stole it. He lied at first. He finally admitted to it. We took him back to the store, walked into the store with him, and stood next to him as he explained to the manager how he stole the item. Consider a payment plan of some kind, one that is reasonable, and explain how this payment plan might work. Help him to keep a record of payments to you or the person you sold from each week or each month. Let's go back to returning that item, shall we? If he stole something from the store, help the child return the item, much like I did for the dollar store. With compassion, talk to her in words like, Sweetheart, I know this is very, very scary, and you're probably very, very embarrassed by this. I understand. I get it. But we need to make this right. We need to do the right thing. It's important we do the right thing. Let's show that store owner that you can make this better. Let's show the store owner that you can do the right thing and he can correct this mistake. I bet you, sweetheart, I bet you the store owner will look up to you and respect you and will be thankful that you did. And then go to that store, much like I did at the dollar store, and stand next to her and support her during a very, very scary time. She needs your support. She needs you to be understanding and compassionate with her. Sometimes it's important that we remove the temptations in our lives. And this includes children who might steal. Do not lay money or valuables out in plain sight. Instead, remove these temptations by keeping the money or the valuables out of sight. If necessary, provide lock boxes for other children in your home or maybe for yourself or your spouse. You know, it may be difficult and it might be embarrassing for you and you might think it's just plain mean-spirited to let others know that a child living in your home has a history of stealing. Yet you need to do so. Be prepared to alert your friends, your family members, or others of the child's problems. This may prevent the behavior from happening again because he knows that young child in your home who steals knows that others are looking out, that others are aware. It may deliver a message to the child that their actions are not acceptable. And of course, you're protecting your friends as well. Now, anytime. A child steals. Any time at all a child steals, you let your caseworker know. Let the caseworker know of what the action was and what your response was, what the consequences were. As we talk about it in another online training webinar here at the Foster Care Institute, documentation is so important for foster parents. Document, document, document. We talked about it at great length in that online webinar. You need to make sure you document this. Write down, whether it's an email or in writing in a journal or whatever it may be, you need to write this down, what the child did, the date, the time, the item, the location, and what the consequences and what your response was. You know, children in foster care, not only do they crave your attention, they crave your encouragement. A child at foster care needs constant encouragement from you. Consistently praise him in all areas of his life and let him know that you understand how hard it might be to not give in to temptation, to not steal. 
Let him know that you understand how hard it is for him to admit that he stole. Let him know that you understand how hard it is for him to return that item. To say, I'm sorry. So find him in the act of being honest and reward him in some way. Something like, sweetheart, I thank you so much for telling me the truth. You will not get in as, as much trouble because you did tell the truth. Or something like, sweetheart, I'm glad you were honest. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for telling the truth. You know what? Tonight I'm going to let you stay up and maybe watch 30 more minutes of TV. Whatever it may be, find him in the act of, on of being honest. Find him doing the right thing. Catch him in the act of making good choices. For more on this or for more online training webinars, go to the Foster Care Institute website. Find me at Twitter and on Facebook at Dr. John DeGarmo. And of course, you can email me with questions about this webinar or other questions at drjohndegarmo at gmail.com. We talk about stealing and lying and other areas of discipline and poor behavior in the book, The Foster Care Survival Guide, the essential guide for today's foster parents. And you'll find a wealth of books at our website as well. My friend, thank you for taking part in this webinar. Thank you for being a member of the Foster Care Institute, if you are as a special member, where you get 12-month access to all of our webinars. And thank you, most importantly, for doing what you do, for being an advocate for children in need. For the Foster Care Institute, I'm Dr. John DeGarmo.